Previously, we looked at the origins of mantis boxing, from the folklore of Wonglong and the creation of the first forms. We then learnt about how the various different styles emerged at the end of the 19th century. In this final part, I will explain how the early 20th century transformed the art into what we practice today, and how mantis boxing spread around the world. In 1911, thousands of years of dynastic rule came to an end with the Xinhai Revolution and China became a republic. The nationalist government, called the Guomindang in Chinese, or KMT for short, wanted to modernize and reform the country. There was a lot of debate on the direction China should take, with many different factions pushing their own agendas. The KMT government sought to remold Chinese culture in a way that would encourage national unity. One big part of this was martial arts. Up until this point, martial arts was considered a pastime of lowlives, vagabonds and other unsavoury types, being looked down upon by the Confucian elite. At the same time, some modern reformers wished to see martial arts banned and modern western sports encouraged instead. The KMT government instead reinvented the martial arts, naming them Guo Shu, or the national art. They established the Zhongyang Guo Shu Guan, or Central Martial Arts Institute, and made attempts to standardize the practice. Forms practice became more heavily emphasized, and Western calisthenics were incorporated. The institute seems to have taken some inspiration from the Japanese Budo movement, with the focus being less on combat and more on cultivating a sense of Chinese identity in its practitioners and ideals of self-cultivation. Most cities and regions had their own branch institutes, which invited teachers of local styles to run classes. In the Shandong Peninsula, the Laiyang Martial Arts Institute became one of the most well-known, producing three figures of particular renown, the Three Mountains of Laiyang. These men were all students of Jiang Hualong and Song Zide, the founders of Taiji Mantis, mentioned in part two. They were nicknamed the Three Mountains as their name all contained the character Shan, which means mountain. They were Li Kun Shan, Wang Yu Shan, and Tui Shou Shan. Li Kun Shan became national champion in spear combat in the 1933 National Martial Arts Tournament and was awarded a medal by President Chiang Kai shek himself. Wang Yushan also competed in the tournament, and while winning the Shandong Provincial Leitai Division, he was later disqualified for using an illegal strike when he got to the finals in Nanjing. Meanwhile, Tui Shoshan moved up to Manchuria to establish a school in the Japanese colonized city of Dalian. After the communist takeover in 1949, Li Kunshan relocated to Taiwan when the KMT retreated from the mainland, and Wang Yushan and Tui Shoshan both returned to their home villages in Laiyang. Around the same time, in Shanghai, the Qinwu Association was also established, with much of the same goal and ideals. The association was founded by Huo Yunjia, who was the subject of the Jet Li movie Fearless and the earlier Bruce Lee movie, The Chinese Connection. In the Seven Star Mantis lineage, the successor of Wang Yunsheng was Fan Xudong. He was initially invited to Shanghai to teach at the Jingwu, but declined and instead sent a couple of his top students, first Yang Weixin, and later the famous Luo Guangyu. Luo Guangyu taught in Shanghai for a period, before moving further south to help expand the Jingwu mission. Branches were established in Foshan, Guangdong province, and then Hong Kong, where he spent most of his time. Early students of his in Shanghai also spread the art to Penang in Malaysia, where he himself later went and spent time teaching. It was his students in Hong Kong who popularized the art and eventually saw it spread to the world.
The Howell family also became prominent around this time. Of the six sons of Howell Yen Ru, three of them became renowned masters of Mantis boxing. The second son, Hao Hung Lu, was nicknamed the Sword Wizard and developed the Damo sword style, which used a large double-handed sword that has since become one of the most characteristic weapons of Mantis. His son, Hao Bin, studied Taiji Mantis under Ji Chun Ting, combining it with his family's own style and teaching hundreds of students throughout Shandong and Manchuria up until the 1980s. The fourth and fifth sons, Hao Hung Xin and Hao Hung Po, respectively, both established their own schools and became prominent figures in the martial arts community of Yantai. Not much is known about the other sons, other than the sixth son was shot dead when he heckled communist soldiers as they entered Yantai in 1949. Another important figure of this time was Zhao Zhu Shi, known as Chu Chuk Kai in Cantonese. He named his art Taiji Mantis, although it came from a different lineage to the three mountains of Laiyang. Like Luo, Chu moved south to spread the art and spent much of his time in Hong Kong and Vietnam, as well as other places. Many of his students migrated to the US, Canada and Australia and opened their own schools there. Mantis boxing has come a long way from an obscure art in rural Shandong province. Throughout its documented history, it has survived wars, foreign invasions and revolutions, and is now spread throughout the world, improving the lives of countless people worldwide and bringing people from all different backgrounds together for a shared love of the art. Rather than arguing about who is the most authentic or pure lineage, Instead, we should realise that we are all part of a shared heritage and that the evolution is just as important as the creation. The various styles of mantis boxing we practice today embody the experience and wisdom of generations of countless people, all of which left their own mark on the arts. 